Good evening. My name is Emily Lettergerber. I'm the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society. For 111 years, the Anti-Cruelty Society has provided an open door to Chicago's neediest animals. Our mission of building a community of caring for by helping pets and educating people is evident in all of our programs and services. Tonight I'll be discussing our, our animal behavior and training programs at the Anti-Cruelty Society on this live interactive call-in television program brought to you by CAN-TV21. We invite you to call in with any questions regarding behavior training, anything about the society at 312-738-1060. And tonight, my guest with today is Avi Brown. Mm -hmm. She is an a one of our animal behavior and training assistants at the Anti Cruelty Society. How are you tonight, Avi? I'm good. Thank you, Emily. How are Thank you? I'm good. And who do you have with you tonight? This is Jolie. And Jolie is about three months old. She is a Chihuahua mix. Um, and she is available for adoption at Anti Cruelty. She is spayed already and she is ready to go home today. She's absolutely adorable. Yeah. So if you're thinking about adopting, definitely let us know. You can visit us online at www.anticruelty.org or you can call us at 312-644-8338 to see if she is still available. Plus, she has a couple other buddies over there that are just as cute as she is. And um, we actually have a lot of puppies right now. So if you're looking for a puppy, give us a call or let us or come on in. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about our our animal behavior and training the entire program but first I want to start off talking about um, behavior screenings we have behavior screenings for almost all of our pets and what we do is what's called a BSR or behavior screening report But before we actually get into this we do have a call so let's see who's on the line hello 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 hi hi yes I have a two-part question I wanted to know is there an age uh, limit to have a cat spayed or neutered um, you know what, we there isn't really a, an age limit, but we actually want you to definitely give us a call if you are looking to have your, your pet spayed. You can actually call us at 312-644-8338 and go directly to our clinic. So okay. they can answer every question that you have about any of your spaying and neutering questions. Okay, and I have one more question. If a cat has never been outside and been around other cats, is it possible for them to have uh, fleas? Um, what do you think, Abby? If someone brought in the fleas, you know, if a flea had jumped onto a person and then jumped into your house, then maybe. Um, it's not likely, but it's always good to talk to your vet about flea prevention. All right. If, if anybody else has any questions, definitely give us a call, 312-738-1060. But now we're going to talk about our behavior screening report. And we might refer to this as what's called a BSR, but what actually is this report? What is this all about? A behavior screen report is um, a compilation of various tests that we put a dog or cat through mm -hmm. um, to learn more about their behavior and thus uh, hopefully find them uh, the best home. Okay. Um, and then why do, why do a lot of the animals need to be screened? What, why do we actually put them through this process? Well, um, as I said, the, uh, the ideal um, goal here is to figure out more about the animal's temperament and mm -hmm. personality and thus um, make sure that we can find the best home for it. Not mm -hmm. all animals are good with children, okay. good with other animals, so uh, the BSR is a way of helping um, determine that. Okay. And then, um, again, why? What, what is an animal that's a good candidate for this, for actually screening? Do you screen all animals that come in or...? We do our best to screen um, all dogs before they reach the adoption floor. Okay. Um, far too many cats to do that. So okay. um, we will test um, cats that have shown um, behavior uh, quirks, okay. so to speak. So if you know they're they're play biters, which means they get a little mouthy during play or something like that, we might take a closer look okay. at that animal. Okay. So our basically our behavior screening is just to make sure that the animals are good with anything and, and see what is really going on in their mind before we put them up for adoption. Okay. <laughs> and then has this little lady been screened? Alas, no. Okay. Um, we just uh, received a, a lot of dogs from um, a shelter in Tennessee called A Place to Bark. We mm -hmm. have a really great relationship with Bernie Berlin, who's an amazing woman who runs that shelter. And actually, our spay neuter programs are working here in the city, so we okay. get less puppies turned in. Okay. So she, she gives us lots of puppies to adopt at to get home. Oh, and this is, this is little Jolie, and she mm -hmm. is one of the adorable puppies from A Place to Bark. Um, and we do have another call, so um, let's take it. Hello? Hi. Hi. What's your question? Hi. I was wondering if you had
any information maybe about a vaccination clinic, you know, somewhere where we could go and you wouldn't have to necessarily get an exam because my dog has her rabies mm-hmm. not for three years and we don't really, can't really afford to take her to the vet right now, but we wanted her to have her distemper shot. Do you know of any clinics that just do vaccinations? Well, we actually do have a low cost spay or neuter clinic. You do have to qualify, but in order to, um, qualify you can actually call us and you can call us at 312-644-8338 or you can also go online and actually go to our clinic web page which is at www.anticruelty.org and you could actually go there and then they will see if you qualify but they do everything from exams to shots to anything if you do qualify for our low-cost clinic so if you're just joining us, my name is Emily Lettergerber. I'm the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society. I'm here with Avi Brown and <laughs> a little puppy that's laying on her lap that you can barely see. Um, taking a nap now. <laughs> taking a nap. She's up for adoption. Um, and we are here on Can TV 21 and we would love for you to call in with any questions that you have. Today we're discussing our behavior um, department at the Anti-Cruelty Society. So if you do have questions about any behavior or anything like that, call us at 312 312- Seven three eight one zero six zero. So we just started discussing our BSR, which is our behavior screening report that we do on a lot of our animals. Um, what's actually involved when you screen a cat? Well, screening a cat um, is a bit more of a, a simpler test than screening a dog. But basically, what we're looking for is um, friendliness with other cats, okay. which uh, we are not surprised when we don't get initially. Uh, most cats, um, it takes them a little while to warm up to new cats. Um, but we're also trying to see what their favorite toy is because play is very important for cats and sometimes is, a, is the only thing that really brings them out of their shell um, when they first arrive at the shelter. Usually most animals are a little bit nervous. Okay. So we'll try a you know, feather toy, mm-hmm. you know, wand toy, um, little ball, crumpled up piece of paper, stuff like that. Um, okay. And also general handling too. You know, is this a cat that can handle anything that lets you, you know, hug it like a rag doll, or is it a little bit more sensitive, not really into handling, to see whether or not this this cat would be good in a home with children, okay. who can, you know, be a, a little bit more physical with their animals. So. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and we have another call. This is a great show. Thanks everybody for calling in. Hi. What's your question? I want to know if what. I have two questions. Sure. Sorry. That's okay. What's your question? Go ahead. How much are they, and where are you? Well, if you would like to find out about adopting a pet at the Anti-Cruelty Society, definitely give us a call. We're at 312-644-8338, or you can visit us on our website at www.anticruelty.org. Um, we do have a full listing of the animals that are available. Sometimes we don't have them on the website, so if you do want a specific pet, give us a call. And we are located at 157 West Grand Avenue, and we're right on the corner of LaSalle and Grand. And actually, our adoption center location is 510 North LaSalle. So if you do want to come adopt a pet, definitely go to that location in LaSalle and Grand and find us and come see what we have available. So we just got done talking about screening cats. What does it take to screen a dog? What do you look for when you're screening a, a dog? Um, similar to what we're looking for with cats, um, mm-hmm. we introduce them to other dogs. We do basic handling to see how they handle that. And okay. we also um, gauge their resource manners, which means I offer things and I take it away with a fake okay. plastic hand and see if they're okay with that. Okay. We do have another caller. Um, and we'll definitely take this question too. What's your question? Hey, thanks for taking my call. No problem. I just wanted to ask, how do you know when when someone comes in to adopt an animal, um, Mm -hmm. how do you know when their personality and the personality of the animal will will gel well together? Well, we actually do a, we have a pretty strict um, interview process where everyone has to fill out an application, list their references, um, list their veterinarian, but then we actually also go through and interview them. And Avi, you can actually talk about um, some of the things we look for when we're matching pets and their pet parents. Well, uh, for example, like this little nugget that's asleep in my lab, she's a puppy. Um, She's only about three months old, so she has a very tiny bladder, so she needs to go outside to go to the bathroom quite often. So for someone who works long hours, you know, a, a straight, eight, nine, ten hour day um, and, and doesn't have uh, the resources to hire someone to take the puppy out, um, then that's that's not really, you know, the best match. So someone possibly who works from home 
or there's lots of members of the family that like someone can always, you know, be there to take the puppy out and help socialize it, um, things like that. You know, someone who leads a very active lifestyle might do well with an active breed, such as, you know, a border collie or cattle dog or something. Mm -hmm. But some um, older couple, you know, who are in their golden years want just, you know, a nice calm companion would do best with a lap dog, you know, like a Lhasa or something like that. And we actually do have a program for um, people that over the age of 60 where um, we actually will waive your adoption fee if you do adopt from us. So it's called our age to, or excuse me, our Pets for the Elderly program. No, we do not think elderly is 60, but <laughs> we want you to know that this is available for you because we really understand how incredible pets are on your health. So um, again, if you, if you are interested in adopting or interested in any of our training programs, you can call us at 312-644-8338 or visit us online at www.anticruelty.org. And it does look like we have another call. Um, hello, what's your call? What's your question? Hi. Excuse me. Hello. I have um, a cat. He's about six years old. I rescued him about five years ago. Um, he is fabulous cat. I love him. But he meows all of the time. And I've taken him to the vet and he said he just likes to kind of hear himself. Mm -hmm. He's very vocal. He yells night and day. And I mean, he just literally, he's like an opera singer. Is there anything <laughs> behaviorally that we can do to kind of help? <laughs> we have earplugs at night. To sleep, so it's interesting. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> do yeah. you have a, a Siamese mix by any chance? Oh, no, we lost that one. Oh, okay. Even if it's not a Siamese mix, do you have um, any suggestions? Yeah, well, a couple suggestions would be, um, one, uh, tire him out. You know, the more you can wear out their cat, hopefully the less he'll feel to the need to, to vocalize his needs. So um, real good interactive play, uh, like the flashlight game, you know, get him to chase the, the beam of light around. It's good. It's very important to, to complete the cycle with that game because that's a game that plays on their prey drive. So when you're ready to end the cycle, like end the game, you turn off the flashlight, toss a few treats down there. So he feels that, like he, he caught something and ate it. And yay, I'm a great hunter. Um, you could try also some um, ambient noise too. If he likes to hear things, try a, a CD, you know, a noise CD or turn on Animal Planet, mm -hmm. you know, see if he'll take to that. Sometimes just hearing other animals or hearing other noises is enough to distract him from that. Okay. Um, and mark and reward when he's not talking, you know, if yeah. he's just wandering around being silent, yes, good cat, have a little bit of tuna or just, you know, an extra little bit of extra special treat. You don't want to go overboard, uh, but just a little bit of pupil food now and then can be a great motivator. <laughs> oh, and it does look like we have another caller. Everybody, thank you so much for calling in. What's your question? It's me again from the two last calls. Sure. I wanted to know because my dog never heals. Mom, okay. You need to make him walk with you. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. So you want to learn about loose leash walking? Well, we have uh, obedience classes that you know you could take with your dog that will uh, help teach him how to walk loosely on leash. But one uh, one game you could try is red light, green light. When the leash uh, when the leash is loose, that's green light. You can go ahead and walk with your pup. As soon as he tightens the leash and you feel tightness on that leash, red light. Just stop. Hold the leash. And don't move anywhere until he stops. He looks around, checks in with you. Yes, good puppy. And then you could walk again. The the yes, good puppies and the um, praise are very, very, very important, especially when you're trying to get him to heal. So as much as much as you can positively reinforce your dog for being good, definitely do it. Yeah. Agree? Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. you can carry a little pouch of, of treats, or maybe if he really is gung-ho about his kibble, you can carry some of that. Have a bit of kibble in your hand, hold it down at your side, and have the pup eat the kibble out of your hand as you're walking. Yes, good puppy. Good walking. Good puppy. You know, just uh, pick a cue that you want um, for, you know, walking on leash. Good walking. Or something else, uh, something akin to that and just use that same cue. Hopefully a pup will learn very quickly. Usually if you've got a food motivated dog, you could teach him about anything. <laughs> and most of them actually are food motivated. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree? Absolutely. <laughs> they love hot dogs too, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of hot dog goes a long way. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, if you're interested in learning about any of our services or any of our um, training pr classes, you can call us at 312-644-8338 or you can visit us online at www.anticruelty.org. Now, we have been answering a ton of questions, so if you do have any questions, definitely give us a call. We're at 312-738-1060 on this live, interactive CAN-TV television program. And I'm here with Avi Brown. 
She is our one of our behavior and training assistants at the Anti-Cruelty Society. And we've discussed a little bit about our, our training processes and, and what we do. And we actually do um, what we call our BSRs, which is our behavior screening reports. Is there anything else we do to get animals ready to go up for adoption? Well, I've been training wise. Oh, training wise. Um, well, we have a wonderful network of volunteers who uh, take our dogs out and exercise them, which is vital. Mm -hmm. You know, um, dogs need time to act like dogs. So they need to run around. They need to play. So um, our volunteers are, are really, really great um, in that respect. Take them out to the courtyard, let them run around for a bit. Um, but also uh, one of my coworkers has um, something she calls finishing school. So basically um, taking a network, a, a group of volunteers, and teach them more about basic training to help um, the dogs expand their vocabulary. So everyone loves a dog that you know knows how to sit, knows how to down, knows how to give paw, and um, dogs that know more tend to get adopted more quickly. Parlor tricks. It's all about the parlor <laughs> tricks, right? <laughs> Essentially. <yeah. laughs> and then um, we also do, because a lot of people do have a lot of questions about behavior, and we really never want you to give up on your pets, we actually have a behavior hotline. And this hotline is free, and it's actually for anyone who has any questions about behavior and their pet, again, because we don't want people to give up on them. And we, we don't want to see them. <laughs> we will definitely take any pet that needs, needs a home. But if you are having um, behavior issues with your pet, you can call us at our hotline. So what's, what's our hotline all about, Evie? I think it's honestly one of the best services that we offer um, because some people, you know, they're at their wit's end uh, with, questions uh, of what to do with their animals with mm -hmm. certain behaviors example um the woman who called in earlier with the cat who's meowing all the time that's a mm -hmm. that's a common um call that we get most common call for cats though is litter box issues you know cats going to the bathroom outside the litter box or um house training issues with the dogs like how do i get my dog to go outside okay. and um, we have a, a great network of people who are um, on staff ready to answer those questions okay well it does look like we have a call and i it could be very very close to a behavior call hi my hi. question is uh, i'm not quite ready to adopt yet but mm -hmm. there is a animal that i saw on your website that i would like to adopt i was wondering if uh, you can foster a particular animal first before you decide to adopt well, generally, the animals that actually are up for adoption are ready to go. Um, we usually only have our foster program for those that are sick um, or too young to be up for adoption or anything like that. So the ones that are up for adoption are are typically ready to go, and, and, it, and we don't hold animals because we want to make sure that they have every opportunity to be adopted. So if you do... Uh, are you if you're really interested in that pet we suggest that you at least go apply for it and see what you can do to get ready to adopt a pet otherwise if you are interested in actually fostering um, we do have a great foster program and we do have a lot of pets that are always in need of being fostered so um, I don't know if you have anything to add on that but if, if you're not ready you're not ready but if you do find that special pet sometimes they end up adopting you yeah. so <laughs> yeah and you know, um, if you, you know you're not ready then take the time until you're certain that you are and just remember we get new animals and every day yep. and they all need homes yep and then and again if you are interested in fostering it could be a good opportunity to, for you to see if you do want a pet full-time um, otherwise fostering is is definitely nursing animals back to health or letting them grow up a little bit before they're ready to be adopted so if you are interested in either adopting fostering or any of our training programs you can call us at 312-644-8338 or you can visit our website at www.anticruelty.org or you can call in and ask us questions today we're here on this live interactive call-in television program brought to you by can tv and you can call us here at 312-738-1060 so we were just discussing our, our behavior hotline a little bit, um, and Avi was just saying she thinks it's the single best service that we do offer. Well, not the single best, but <laughs> definitely one of the top. <laughs> one of the top services that we offer because it does help you with behavioral issues with your pets. Um, what what are some more of the common questions that people call for? Um, common things for dogs, uh, as mentioned, house oiling, um, but also. Uh, leash questions, you know, my dog barks at other dogs on leash, or how do I control my dog on leash? Um, you know, other things like, there have been some interesting ones, like dog refuses to go to the bathroom in front of the person, makes house training a little difficult. <laughs> uh, with cats too, you know, meowing at all hours, uh, attacking ankles, 
Okay. Um, some cats do that. Strong prey drive. They tend to go after things that move, and her ankles are rather tender, so most people are not on board with that. <laughs> what, would you, what would you say to someone who did have that problem if your cat was attacking your ankles? Well, it's obvious that the cat does have a strong prey drive, and if it's a kitten you're talking about, you might want to think about adopting a second kitten. We really encourage, okay. you know, if you're looking at young kittens, to adopt a pair. Okay. Um, kittens are feisty. <laughs> They've got lots of energy um, and um, a specific play style that some older cats really are not on board with. Mm -hmm. um, but the other kittens, they just, they love it. You know, they have a grand old time. So usually they can chase each other around and nip at each other's ankles okay. and they're okay with that. Um, if you've got a, a slightly older cat that's going through that, try to redirect it onto a toy. And you got to start watching your cat and look for certain uh, body language cues that they'll give off. You know, cats head lowered and the eyes are really focused on your ankle, the tip of the tail starts twitching really, really fast. That means they're, they're geared up for something. So, you know, uh, direct that onto a toy before they reach their threshold where they just have to chase after that fast moving object. Okay. That is, that's very interesting. <laughs> so definitely get the toys out. The, cat, the cats and the dogs both love toys and it, and it simulates their brain a little bit. So play, yeah. play, play, play. Play is, is vital for a healthy animal. Yep. So when, if I were to call our hotline, is there someone always there to call? I mean, is there someone who's going to pick up the phone whenever I call, or how does that work? Not directly. Um, okay. You will be directed to a voicemail, um, okay. and there are several people uh, who will return your phone call within uh, 48 to 72 hours of, re of receiving your call. Okay. So you call, you leave your name, um, number, mm -hmm. and the uh, problem you're experiencing with your animal, and one of us will get back to you. Okay. So then if you are calling and you do have a problem, you can call us at 312-644-8338, extension. My extension is 318. Uh, there's also extension 343 and 315. Okay. And 323 for more information about our dog training classes. Okay. So it could potentially be you specifically that are answering the calls, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is it is it just you or are there a full is there a full staff of people who are calling? Um pretty calls? much everyone in my department um, okay. can return phone calls okay. uh, on the behavior hotline, so there are 5 of us. Okay. Um is there a lot of people ask us about our behavior hotline and they ask can I actually train my animal through the advice you give me on the hotline? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, it really depends on the behavior issue that you're having. Um, if you have serious concerns about aggression um, towards people or towards other dogs, typically we're going to refer you to a private trainer. Okay. Um, uh, with cases like that, you know, it's just for safety issues, you know, both yours and the dog's. Um, we're, we'd like someone to go out to your home and observe the behavior in the home because that's really where you're going to see the, the meat of the problem. Okay. Do we actually do that at the Anti-Cruelty Society? We have training classes um, at the Anti-Cruelty Society, but we do not have private training um, okay. classes. But uh, we do have a, a whole long list of private okay. trainers that most of them are trainers at the Anti-Cruelty as well. Okay. Um, we... Anyone who wants to start training classes at the Anti-Cruelty um, needs to go through our apprenticeship program okay. um, so that we make sure that everyone is using similar training methods. We are big fans of uh, positive reinforcement. Okay. Get so, out the hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> food ba you know, food and reward-based training. Yeah. That's, that's the method that we're really going for. Yeah, and you can see it. As soon as you walk into the society and you see the pets and how well-behaved they are, you can see exactly how how the positive reinforcement has worked on a lot of the, the dogs there. Absolutely. So. And we offer a variety of classes from wee ones where you could take puppies as small as the one that's sound asleep in my lap. Um, and uh, or dogs as, you know, old as 10, 12. It's never too late to train your dog. You know, Absolutely. the whole adage, can't uh, teach an old dog new tricks, is not true. Old Absolutely. dogs are probably easier to, to train because <laughs> they're a little bit more focused, a little bit more willing to check in with their people. Okay. And we also offer a CGC prep course, which is a canine good citizen prep course. Okay. Well, it looks like our time here is almost done. Our phone lines are now closed. Thank you, everyone, for calling in, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Avi, for joining us thank tonight. Thank you for having and me. And the little puppy. And, and we got to leave. We got to wake little Jolie up. Um, but if you are interested in adopting either Jolie or any of our animals, visit our website, www.anticruelty.org. 
Call us at 312-644-8338 or just come on in. We're at 510 North LaSalle and we have a wealth of information about pets, about training, and all the information and animals that you could ever want to adopt. So thanks again. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next show and visit us and watch again on Tuesday at 430.